Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing new technology stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. New Technologies designs, manufactures, and sells high-performance, smart electronic scooters. Its headquarters are in China. It was founded in 2014 and received $125 million in venture capital over several rounds of funding. Early on, the company differentiated itself by using lithium ion batteries as opposed to cheaper lead acid alternatives that were widely used in Chinese scooters at the time. 98% of its sales are in China. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 3.3 billion market cap. They're trading at $44 a share and they have 73 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. The company had negative free cash flow in 2018, but positive in the other years. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they had negative in 2017-18, positive in 2019, and a trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that's growing quite a bit. It triples from 2017 to the trailing 12 months. All the numbers on my Excel spreadsheet are in US dollars, but the company reports all its numbers in Chinese Yuan. This is the company's income statement. All these numbers are in Yuan. If you want to convert to US dollars, you can just divide by seven. The top line is the revenue, the sales for the company. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And the company does have positive gross profit each year. And it's growing. It's up to half a billion yuan in the trailing 12 months. Below that is operating expenses. And they did have negative operating income in 2017 and 18. But now they have positive operating income in 2019 in the trailing 12 months. Below that is the interest they receive on their investments minus the interest they pay in their debt. So it looks like they have a positive because they have other investments, but they do have some debt on their books. Then there's other income and expenses, which are usually impairments. Then they have their pre-tax income. So they did have positive pre-tax income in a trailing 12 months and a small bit of taxes. So they have positive net income in 2019 and a trailing 12 months. So things are improving for this company. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. So each year they do generate positive operating cash flow, 179 million yuan in 2019. And this is capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. It was negative in 2018, but positive in 2019. The company doesn't use much debt to run its business. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. And this company does generate positive operating cash flow. To calculate that, you start with net income, which is 190 million. Then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. They pass through a $32 million depreciation expense. They also pass through a 6.7 million gain on the income statement. We have to subtract that out on a CFO section. They also passed through 19.6 million of stock-based compensation and a 10.5 million asset impairment. But the main reason their operating cash flow is lower than their net income because they had negative 70 million of changes in working capital. These are changes in accounts payable, accounts receivable, inventory, any working capital category. Let's look at a capital structure. $119 million of equity, $33 million of debt. So they're 78% equity, 22% debt. And they could pay down all their debt with the cash in that balance sheet and still have 82 million left over. Their WAC is 9.5% and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 2.7 billion. 
we discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2.2 billion. We divide that by 73 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $30. They're trading at $44. So they're trading at a 50% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at $17. So they're also saying it's a sell. I grew their future free cash flows based off of analyst estimates. So as you know, the stock price is not necessarily based on how well a company's doing. It's based on how well investors feel a company will do in the future. So if the company grows a lot, more than my future cash flows predict, the stock price could go higher and higher. But if the company doesn't make any money, the stock price will eventually come down. Even if they bid the price up now to a really high dollar amount, it has to come down at some point if they don't make sales. Amazon wasn't making any profit for the longest time, but the stock price kept going up because they were investing into their company and growing it, and they made it into this giant company that it is. So as long as they keep getting sales, they don't need profit as long as they're growing their business. But if they're not getting any sales, the stock price will eventually go down. Maybe even the company will go bankrupt. Since revenue is increasing, and if it continues to increase, it could be a good investment. The stock price has gone up a ton the past few months. It was pretty flat for a while, but it keeps going up. But it's at a really high point, at its highest point ever. The company's beta is close to one, so the stock moves with the market. The stock went up almost four times in the past 52 weeks, much better than S&P 500, which went up 14%. The low was six, the high was 48. The stock is trading well above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About two to two and a half million shares are traded each day for this stock, so it's not too liquid. Only half the shares outstanding are on float. About 28% of the shares are held by institutions, and a little over 2% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it started trading in the United States in October 2018, you'd have $50,000 today. But if you did invest that amount in October 2018, most people would not wait. They would get really antsy, especially when they see it go up and down. But after two years, it barely ever got above the $10,000 you initially invested. But if you would have held out tight, you could have made a really nice return, more than five times your investment. The stock has an annual return of over 100%. The company's previous CEO owns 39% of the company's shares. That's why so few shares are on float. It looks like the company owns 8.5% of the shares. This looks like a Chinese financial company that owns 4.7%. A relative of the ex-CEO owns 4.4%. GGV Capital, this is one of the early investors into the company. They own 4.3%, then Wellington. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 10.9, the median is 14.3. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have a 127 PE, so investors are paying $127 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 9.4. Price to book is stock price of a book value per share. There are 27.5. The way you calculate book value per share to equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet and they have 119 million of equity, 112 million of tangible equity. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can cover their interest payments almost three times. ROE is net income over equity. They have a great ROE at 22%. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.9, so they have a good current ratio. The company does seem to have enough capital to get through the next 12 months without needing more debt. They did have positive free cash flow in the trailing 12 months, and their working capital is $93 million. But they may need to grow their business, possibly expand into other countries like the United States, so they will need more debt or equity if they do that. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Ford, GM, Green Power, Lee, NEO, Solo, Tesla, Workhorse, and Xpeng, all in the same industry as New. And if New has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better in PE because they're positive. Most companies are negative in this industry. They have a much better price to sales and price to book. They are worse in current ratio, but 1.9 is fine. They have a positive ROE because they have positive earnings. 
they're lower in debt than average, and they're much smaller than the average company at 3.3 billion market cap, and they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 50% premium just because their stock price has gotten so high, but that doesn't mean it can't go higher. I think there's a good chance it will because I think investors see the future of this company as being greater than it may be, so they're gonna push the price higher and higher. And who knows, it could be a giant company. There's just gonna be a lot of competition in this industry. So I do not know if they're gonna be one of the leaders, but only time will tell. So to summarize, I give their free cash flow a ranking of three out of 10. It is positive six million US dollars, but it's still pretty low. But they are a young company, so it's not negative, which is good. I give their revenue a five, only because it's growing a lot. It's still a really puny number, $346 million. The ratios look really good, especially in this industry, because this industry has terrible ratios. I'm gonna give their products a five, just because I don't know too much about them. And the small amount I found online about their products seems okay, but I just don't have much information on that. And I'm gonna give their brand a two, because I don't think they have much brand recognition, especially outside of China and probably inside of China as well. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.